Hello, aviators. Welcome back to the Red Barn. I'm AJ Gohan, and today we're going to be doing another episode of Refining Paramotor Skills. This time we're going to be covering what this weird looking thing is that came with your wing when you bought it. This is called a speed bar. We're going to tell you about how to use it, why you would want to use it, and how to install it. So let's get started. All right, so obviously we kind of just talked about what this is, it's a speed bar. And what you use this for is to basically go faster. Um, you can also use it for active piloting to control those pitch oscillations, um, but primarily you're gonna use it for punching out and going fast, covering more distance. Uh, there's a lot of little nuances to cover with this. And before we get started, I'm gonna preface this by saying you should always read your owner's manual for your wing. Every wing has an owner's manual and it's gonna tell you a lot of the little nuances that go along with that particular wing. Uh, we'll do some gen generalized views uh, on about the speed bar, but uh, with that being said, let's cover the basics. First thing uh, I guess I could say is that most paramotor pilots do not use speed bar. Uh, I would say if I was to guess a st statistic, it would probably be like 95% of people that fly a paramotor do not use a speed bar. Most paramotor wings already have a large enough trim selection to where you don't even need to use it. You can give cover a, a lot of ground by just trimming out and going fast. We've talked about this a little bit before, by trimming out, you're allowing your wing to fly at a faster airspeed. This is gonna be doing pretty much the exact same thing, just do a different set of pulleys. So what's happening here is instead of letting your trims out, which is allowing your rear uh, trailing edge to raise up, we're now pulling the speed bar, which is pulling that leading edge of the wing down. Essentially the way the wing is designed is to operate in an assortment of pulleys to allow the wing to do pretty much the exact same thing. Just this time, it's gonna be pulling the leading edge down. Speed bar is primarily used in paragliding and most paragliding wings don't come with trims. The reason why is because they're flying in turbulent conditions and your wing's safest configuration is trimmed in. So they wanna be able to get back to that safe configuration very quickly by just releasing that speed bar. But us as paramotor pilots, we're out flying in the premium time of the day when it's perfect, smooth, calm air. And uh, maybe you've got an LZ where you need to get up and get out of there quickly and go fly somewhere else so you don't bother the people around you. That's a good use for speed bar. The other thing is for active piloting, controlling those pitch oscillations. And sometimes you just wanna go fast. So that's, that's gonna be a lot of the use for the speed bar. You can press that speed bar and you're obviously gonna pick up a lot of airspeed, which as you learned in the energy management video is gonna build up energy into the wing. So you can use this to go into a lot of different maneuvers. Uh, for pylon racing, for example, the paramotor pilots will go out and pylon race and you can use the speed bar to quickly gain speed. But then when you go into a turn, you release that speed bar and it allows that wing to change its angle of attack and roll around a turn pretty quickly. So let's get into all the nuances of speed bar. Most paramotor wings with trims and the use of speed bar is gonna allow that wing to go into full reflex. And what full reflex is, is basically cutting the aspect ratio down, allowing the wing to fly at a faster airspeed. Uh, inherently, the wing becomes more loaded on the A's, therefore making it faster, but also less prone to collapse. However, that does not mean you won't take a collapse if you use full speed bar. Um, it just makes it less prone. And if you read your owner's manual, you'll actually find that it's not good to use in turbulent conditions. So that's the reason why paragliding pilots will come off that speed bar when they start to get in some turbulent air. Uh, the same thing can be said for us as paramotor pilots. I'm not gonna get into all the nuances of what uh, wing design and reflex profiles, but basically you can go ahead and take into account that reflex profile is not gonna be good to use main brakes so if you're uh, fully accelerated, most paramotor wings, you're not gonna be able to use your main brakes any longer. And that's where reading that owner's manual is gonna really come into play here. You need to know when and why you cannot pull your brakes. Uh, for ozone wings, most of the ozone wings, you can let your trims all the way out and still use your main brakes. But the moment you start to use that speed bar, you can no longer use your main brakes. And this can be a very dangerous situation. So uh, that being said, you're gonna wanna learn this just like everything else. You're gonna wanna go up super high, get lots of elevation, you know, two, 3,000 feet above ground level before you start to play with this. It seems like a very easy add-on to do, um, but it's actually a lot, it's a lot more confusing than you would imagine. It takes a little time to develop the skill. And by a little time, we're talking lots and lots of hours. Um, I mean, I've been flying with it for the last year and I'm still learning little nuances and getting better with it every day. So uh, this is something you want to go up high, practice with, and don't really bring it down lower below a thousand feet. Um, that's where you get into those nuances of pulling main brakes and you don't want to be doing that down low if you're fully accelerated because you can and will take a collapse. So read your owner's manual, look into all this stuff. So for example, a Spider 3, if you were to go out and use your speed bar on that wing, you can use your trims all the way out and use your main brakes. 
but as soon as you start to touch that speed bar, you can no longer use your main brakes. So what you end up doing is using your tip steering if you go into that mode. That's going to allow you to make your turns. By going out and reaching those tip steerings and pulling that tip steering out, it gets outside of that reflex profile and allows you to still make your turns, for example, if you're doing a cross country. Uh, the other way you can do this is by doing a weight shift turn. You can weight shift over and still man manage your turns. Um, the other thing is to actually use speed bar to turn and what you can do is kind of let off on one foot and leave the other foot engaged and it changes the angle of your tack of your wing slightly and allows you to do a very slow turn as well. So you can steer by just using speed bar. You can still trim all the way out on the spider and use your main brakes. You can't do that if you use your speed bar in combination with that though. If you trim all the way in on a spider, so you're trimmed slow, but then you start to use your speed bar on the spider three, you can now still use your main brakes, but that's kind of where it gets confusing. So if I keep a rule of thumb. If I'm, if I'm using speed bar, I don't use my main brakes at all because most of the time, the reason why I'm going to be using my speed bar is because I want to go even faster than what my trim range is allowing me. Uh, the only exception of the rule for this, for me in particular, is if I'm trying to chase somebody. Maybe I'm trimmed in to keep up with them, but then all of a sudden I want to gain some speed to get in front of them or, you know, get up next to them to the wing bump. Then I can occasionally apply that speed bar and get right up next to them and then release and wing bump them. We use this a lot when we're doing performances on the Paradigm team. We'll get on that speed bar and jump up next to people to get into formation quickly. I'm sure you've seen lots of videos of people out there flying super low, full bar, fully accelerated, uh, and, and five feet off the ground, and they're really ripping, right? And it looks super fun and super cool, and I'm guilty of doing this as well. But again, I didn't just go jump out there and start flying low with full speed bar. And even that being said, I don't condone this. I don't recommend anyone doing it. It's very dangerous. If something was to happen, it's going to be pretty bad. Um, so. The alternative to this is if you were to release speed bar quickly, you're going to gain a lot of elevation quickly. Uh, and that goes back to that energy management video that you guys watched. You release speed bar quickly, all of a sudden that wing's angle of attack increases, boom, and all of a sudden you start gaining altitude pretty quickly. Uh, again, it's momentary, but you're probably going to gain, depending on the wing that you're flying, anywhere from 20 to 50 to 60 to 70 feet pretty rapidly. So where you can get away with this um, flying down low is by using full bar and you're fully accelerated and all of a sudden you have a motor out. If you just come off bar, you're going to pop up and you're going to have plenty enough time to get that energy into the wing, find a good spot to land and then come down and land. So uh, again, I'm not condoning doing this, but that's kind of the, the school of thought here. So the speed bar is um, got this little flexible loop up here and then you've got the actual bar. Um, the way this attaches is this goes through an assortment of pulleys, which you have to attach to your wing every single time you clip into your wing. If you just leave this on your harness and these are just dangling around, they can go through a prop. So this is a pre-flight item. If you have your uh, speed bar attached to your paramotor harness, you want to make sure that this thing is always attached to your wing or stored, stowed away so that it can't go through the prop. Um, typically, I add a little piece of Velcro right here because most paramotor harnesses have a little strap down here with Velcro and it'll just Velcro on a little more securely than without that Velcro. Uh, when you get ready to use your speed bar, you obviously want to make sure that you're in the correct configuration where you're not going to be pulling main brakes. And I'll just reach down and kind of put my foot on this loop and that'll rip the Velcro off and get you to the point where you can apply both feet to the bar and then fully accelerate. Once that's engaged, now you're going to be moving pretty fast. You're going to have to add some power because you're obviously going to lose some altitude. Um, so this is where playing up high again is going to teach you all this, these nuances. When applying bar, you don't want to quickly just squish this thing down. What's going to end up happening is that wing is going to be pulled down fast. The angle of attack is going to decrease very rapidly and that could be potential for a collapse depending on the conditions that you're in. So you want to slowly apply this B bar, slowly ramp into that power and then that way you don't balloon up or just drop out too quickly. Same thing can be said for releasing the speed bar. If you just drop the speed bar really quickly, that angle of attack is going to increase drastically to the point where it's going to fall back and you can go straight up. So you want to do this very slowly, slowly build the skill up. But what you'll end up seeing is that like pylon racers, for example, they'll fully get fully accelerated uh, by using full bar and trimming all the way up. And then they'll get up next to the obstacle that they want to go around. They'll kind of use some tip steering to get the wing over into a bank and then drop that bar. That allows them to carve around that pylon obstacle. And then as soon as they leave that obstacle, they'll kind of stop the oscillation with the tip steering brake and then fully apply that bar and go straight and level. That's going to be the uh, desired method for actually turning around an, a pylon. Just like everything, when you're learning this speed bar or, or 
coordinated turns or whatever it may be from the previous skills, the roll oscillations, you're also going to want to have a reserve if you're flying with full, fully accelerated. Um, like I said, this could be a dangerous configuration and it's very easy to make a mistake and pull that brake. So that's why you want to go up super high, learn all this stuff, have that reserve as a backup. There's a, a lot of different opinions on speed bar and is it really even needed? Um, I'm of the opinion that I want to be fully versatile when I fly my paramotor. I want to have all the options available to me at all times. So every single time I fly a paramotor, I have one installed on my harness. I clip it in every single time. And uh, if I get caught in maybe some high winds and I got to make it back to the LZ, I'll use it for that. Uh, again, only if it's not turbulent. If it's turbulent, then I probably won't use it just because it's not the safest configuration. Uh, a lot of people, they think that it's not really needed though, and I don't disagree with them. Um, most paramotor wings, they have a large enough trim selection to where you can still use those main brakes uh, and it's still safe, but you still gain enough airspeed to catch up to your buddies or do those cross country flights. You don't need to add the extra complexity of a speed bar. So this may be something that you never even use. I, like I said, most paramotor pilots will never even use this thing. Um, for me, I just like to know every skill, have that available to me. Um, so it's just, you know, your own opinion if you want, if you feel like this is something you can use. Uh, I kind of covered earlier, one of the reasons why you want to use this is maybe you, you just got off work and um, you've only got 15 minutes of sunset left and the place that you can go fly and cruise around and have a good time at is, you know, five miles away. Well, you've only got 15 minutes of sunset. You want to get over there as quick as possible. So you'll jump up in the air, you know, get your altitude, trim all the way out, jump on bar, get over to where you want to go play, get off bar, trim back in, come back down and play around the trees or wherever you want to go play uh, and then still be able to make it back before that sun sets. So that's another good option for why you would want to use this. But uh, in general, not most people don't use this thing. So when adjusting the speed bar, um, most people end up adjusting it right here at the, the bar itself. You can do that. I typically leave mine alone and leave this configuration as it's set. And I come over and adjust it at the sister clip right here, the part that attaches to your actual wing. And you can do that pretty simply by just loosening this up, taking the clip off, and then coming back down and tying a knot, like a bow in the knot or something like that. Uh, and so you can find that setting actually while you're in the air. Adjusting at the bar is gonna be pretty difficult to do when you're, when you're flying. Uh, obviously the easiest way to adjust this is to have a set of risers, a dummy set of risers, and get up in your harness and hang test yourself and see if you can fully extend. It may take multiple flights if you don't have this configuration. So if you don't have a, a set of dummy risers to test this on, you just go up and fly, adjust it. Uh, if it's not long enough or it's too long, you come back down, you land, you readjust it, you go back up and, and adjust it again. Um, so it takes two, three, maybe four iterations. But if you adjust it at the sister clip, you can potentially adjust it while you're in the air. Now, obviously you're gonna add a whole extra complexities and a list of things to do. So maybe it's better just to go down and land and do it, but I still adjust at the sister clip just because it's easier for me to adjust with that bowline knot. So the stock uh, speed bar that comes with your wing, especially the ozone wings, it's gonna be adjusted to where it's extremely too long. You're not, you're gonna go full bar and it's just gonna be doing absolutely nothing. So you're gonna have to tighten this thing up quite a bit. And that could actually be dangerous because if you pull full bar and these things are too long, there's potential that it could actually go under your cage and maybe you hit your prop. So you wanna get it as close as you can before you ever even try and fly with this thing. You can kind of do that by uh, attaching your risers, standing up with your paramotor and um, you know, stepping on your speed bar to see if it engages or not. Um, that's a good way to at least start off with this. There are uh, several different types of speed bars. This is the ozone bar that comes with all the ozone paramotor wings. I like this personally, and I know a lot of paraglider pilots actually use this even on non-ozone wings. Um, this is basically like a two-stage where you can reach down with a loop, pull it out, and then engage the full bar if you want to. Um, and you can adjust this accordingly. If you don't want to have to lock your legs out and you just want to pull, uh, you know, have your knees bent a little bit, you can adjust that for that configuration, or you can adjust it to where you go full speed bar and your knees are locked and you're at 100% fully accelerated. Um, so it's just personal preference on how you wanna use it. There are different types of speed bars, especially for different manufacturer wings, and they'll have like a three stage system where they'll have like two or three different bars to use like 33% or 66% or 100%, uh, depending on if you wanna lock your, your legs or not. But I think this is a pretty good system that comes with the ozone wings as it is. One of the reasons why I like this one is because when you stow it, it's not all this extra stuff hanging down. It's, it's out of your way. You don't really, you forget about it as long as you're clipped up with these sister clips. Um, and you can buy extra sister clips and attach them to your actual articulating arms um, so that you don't have to use your speed bar every single time. You don't have to hook them up. And then when you get in the air, you can actually just disconnect them and then reconnect them to your wing. You don't have to necessarily attach it to your wing every time if you have a proper way to stow this. 
I mentioned uh, active piloting with the speed bar, and what I mean by that is pitch control. You can use this to go into maneuvers, and if you're about to balloon out of something, you can jump on that bar, and that will limit how much you, you actually balloon up. You can come out on a flatter trajectory. Um, so that's one of the ways you can use this. Uh, paragliding pilots use this for this reason, uh, punching in and out of thermals, um, covering distance to make it to the next thermal quickly, and then get back up to cloud base, punch out of the thermal, um, so that's typically how paragliding pilots will use that, or maybe they're ridge soaring and the winds are starting to get a little too high. They'll use it to get a little more airspeed, punch away from the mountain, and then go back about their normal flight there. So let's go ahead and install this on a paramotor, and uh, we'll go out and give this thing a, a rip around and, and show you what it's all about. All right, so this is your speed bar. This is how it comes from your wing bag. And like I said before, you can adjust it here if you want to. I have adjusted this one in that way. Um, but one of the other ways you can adjust it is by just loosening this little closed loop system right here, just like so, and then pulling your sister clip through. So it's pretty simple once you do that, and then you can tie it back through in a knot. So now I've come off with this, the sister clip is free, so I can just run this back through straight like this, come down through here, tie a bowline knot, and then it's tied up for me in the correct adjustment. If I need to adjust it, it's much easier to adjust it up at the actual sister clip. So this is my particular frame right here, my paramotor, my fly products. And what I have is my speed bar, as you can see, that I've used extensively. And I've tied it up down here, but I've got this little Velcro strap. I've added a little extra piece of Velcro to make it even more secure. And what I do is I just reach down, kind of throw it on there, and it's good to go. When I'm ready to deploy it, I just kick it out with my foot just like that, and now I'm on bar. The way this works is it routes through a series of pulleys that your harness will come with. It's just basic, some pretty basic little pulleys. You're gonna have to remove your sister clip, route it through this pulley, make sure that you route it outside of everything else up to your top pulley, and this makes it available to where you can attach it to your riser, which would be right here. Um, again, you're gonna have to take several attempts to adjust this to get it set up correctly, but you should have it to where that when you go full bar, you should either have your legs locked or a slight bend in your knees. Obviously, if you leg lock, it'll stop blood flow. So you wanna, you know, I don't like locking my legs. I like to have a little bit of a bend in it, but that's personal preference. Things to take note of, you wanna make sure before you attach this speed bar that you don't have it all wrapped around stuff or, or going through your hoop or rubbing on anything because what can happen is over time, it can rub a, it can start to slowly cut your harness. So just make sure this is free and clear of everything and moves freely. So let's say you've been out flying and you're ready to come into land. You were using your speed bar. Typically what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to stow this, this uh, speed bar back on its Velcro keeper here. Um, you don't necessarily have to because the wing's gonna be above you. It's gonna be kind of putting tension on your, on your speed bar and you won't really be kicking it. But as soon as that wing comes down, now you're gonna have a, a speed bar dragging around on the ground and uh, you're gonna look like, kind of like a goon. So. Typically, before you come into land, you're gonna stow that speed bar back away and keep it out of your way. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed learning about the speed bar. Enjoy it, have fun, be safe out there, set those minimums, set those boundaries, and hold yourself to those standards. Have fun, guys.